shall be had. He was highly respected among his peers and the supervisory staff. And um, when he died, they just blessed his family. They um, said good things about him and um, they gave them all that was due them as far as benefits and uh, it was just a pleasant experience for such a terrible time as that. So uh, it pays to treat people the way you want to be treated and that's one thing he did. Um, I'm not saying he was perfect. We all have, uh, all have fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. But how you treat people is what's important. And that's one thing I love about Norman and Leroy. Uh, you can't get too far away from them. They want to come and check up on you. I remember when I got married, my brother Norman, Leroy was still young, but my brother Norman would come and check up on me weekly and make sure everything was going well. And uh, I'm sure he and Big O.D. had plenty of conversations <laughs> about how I was to be treated. So, because, uh, I mean, I, I wasn't a bad person or anything, but some people just don't have the same mindset. You know, I know uh, Big O'D's parents, uh, father, his father set a good example for him, but he was out there with his friends doing other things. <laughs> so my brother made sure that I was treated uh, right and that's what I love about him. And then when I got with Mitch, he'd come all the way to Richmond and check up on me. So uh, I love his attentiveness. And uh, if he thought I needed anything, he'd tr try his best to get it for me. So uh, I'll always cherish his memory, the hard worker he was, the uh, caring family member that he was. And I, I won't forget uh, how he used to abuse us, hitting us on our <laughs> arms and our thighs with his fists when we wouldn't do what he said. But uh, those were the fun times. Those were the learning periods. I remember one time I tried to get all the kids together to uh, jump him and I said I'll take the uh, neck and the head and you take this leg you take Martha chicken now but me and Floyd Norna we we went at it but he was throwing us off like little fleas <laughs> so we didn't try that ever again <laughs> we weren't successful I'm mm here -hmm. he threw us off not to hurt us but to let us know you can't do this. Don't go there. Don't even go there. When you hit the ground when he threw you, you felt it. It was like boom all the way through your body. So just enough to say, you don't want to go there again. <laughs> so uh, we had a lot of respect for Norman. He was uh, not a tyrant, but uh, a loving, caring, making sure that everything went the way it was supposed to go. He was mom and dad when they were uh, absent from the house. He was uh, big mama with wisdom, you know. Don't touch that, that's hot, you know. He kept everybody where they're supposed to be. And um, when he uh, got married and went away, we really missed him around there. Mm -hmm. Good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just will wrap this up saying that um, I loved my brother from a little child because he always took care of me. He always took care of all of his siblings. 
Um, my mother would leave him in charge and he'd cook dinner and make sure we had something to eat until we could cook it ourselves and until Cecilia took over the cooking. Uh, he was um, very smart. He helped us with our multiplication tables, division, whatever we needed, he was there for us. And, um, I cherish his memory, and I never will forget him, you know. He was like a surrogate parent, and uh, I just can't say enough about how much I loved and admired him. I was so proud of him because he was so handsome, and all the girls were after him, and uh, I used to have uh, three pictures of him, and I made him into uh, three different people. And all the girls at school said, oh, you got some fine brothers. <laughs> I had one in his Air Force suit, had one with his, when he had his hair fried, mm -hmm. uh, and it was uh, a little swirl on yeah. the top. And uh, I, I named them all of his children. One was Alan, and one was Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> and one was Norman Jr. So, uh, I have fond memories of my brother, which I'll take to my grave. Love you, Norman, and you have a beautiful legacy left. Beautiful children doing beautiful things. Amen. All right. My uh, thought for Norman Banks Jr. is once someone who was always the first to do something in our family. He was always first. He was first when I remember that's the first one I seen on TV in the family. He was boxing. He got whooped. And my mother was all upset because he had to fight this big white guy. And my dad told him to fight anyway. Uh, he got put up a good fight but he lost. And then uh, he was the first to fly. He was the first to do everything in our family. But I remember him as a uh, a trailblazer, somebody who protected everybody, somebody who was fearless, and um, who loved his family. Uh, great athlete, great artist, gardener, he could do just about anything he wanted to put, put his mind to. I was always sad that he came up in a time when they weren't allowing black people to do all the things that they allowed me some few four or five years later because of the struggle that we were going through in the country. I always thought he would have been a great uh, leader of some sort after, uh, uh, before he went into to the Air Force. But he came out, he gave us seven sons and two daughters. Uh, he left a legacy of love, uh, that is still uh, coming through. His sons are always doing good things for people in the family. Um, they're talented, like him, and uh, good people. I guess his greatest leg legacy for me was that he uh, never uh, backed away from a challenge, and he would always come up with a solution. Uh, may not be the right solution, <laughs> but it was a solution. And that's what I always appreciated about him. And he could do anything. He uh, spread his legacy because I get a kick now from his uh, granddaughter, who is more him than all of the boys. <laughs> boys. Uh, uh, Christina Spank. Uh, has his mentality of never stopping. Uh, I learned something from them in their uh, thing. I was with her the other day, and we stopped at a stoplight, and she had to um, mail a letter. And she jumped out the car and she said, oh, don't worry, this, three, this light takes take three times to change. She ran across three lanes of traffic, put the mail in the box, I'm sitting there embarrassed because the door is open and said, oh, 
what is Christina doing to me? But then it made me think of my brother. This sounds just like Norman. Know everything. Know when the light gonna change. She made it back before the light changed, got in the car, and we talked about her being like Norman all the way to our house. But he lives in who he left. His legacy is his children. Nine children. I don't, I don't know how many grandkids he got now, but he got a bunch. So he, he, he is still with us in our hearts as probably the strongest outside of my daddy. In fact, he, was, he mirrored my daddy when it came to strength and uh, resolve. So I, I, I remember him as the big protector. Man, all I had to do was say his name and Negroes would leave me alone. <laughs> I tell him with my big brother and he was all over with. So I, 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 I miss him for that reason and that the fact that when I first went back to church after uh, growing up and going away to college and thinking I found out about everything in the world, I discovered the Bible with him. We had long discussions, long study sessions. We went to a teaching ship together, and I learned so much from him and what he had to offer in that period. So I look at as him as my first uh, or second major teacher behind my parents. Uh, he taught us what to say to people in certain situations how to get along. We went into a neighborhood that was 90% white when we moved in. And it was a struggle, but Norman's strength brought us all to a Hi, I'm Cecilia Wilson, Cecilia Banks Wilson, uh, the eldest sister of Norman Banks Jr. And I'm here today to talk about my older brother and our life together. Um, as far back as I can remember, I can remember when we were kids, we came here in 1943. Uh, my father preceded us and my grandmother moved here to California from St. Louis, Missouri. And we had to wait until Madeline was born in December before we could um, leave St. Louis. So we. Um, we left there, hey, we left there in uh, February, I think, if we came to California. And we lived in the uh, Gilman Street Projects in San Francisco. We lived at 2616 Gilman. And uh, Norman was four and I was two when we got here. And Madeline was newborn baby. So Norman was always like our protector. He uh, was the older brother, and my mother drilled into him that he was supposed to take care of his younger siblings. And uh, I think until he died, he was my protector. He always uh, looking out to see me. Even after I got married, he would see that everything was going right with his sister, you know. Uh, we grew up. Uh, Basically, me being a tomboy running behind him, and uh, when he thought it was too many boys, he was sitting there packing and had to go home. You know, he always had that protective spirit, and if he thought somebody was looking at me too much, uh, he'd want to beat him up, you know. He, he was always uh, the big brother first, you know. Um, we uh, went to Bret uh, Hart Elementary School. And from there, he went to James Denman Junior High. No, I take that back. First, he went to uh, Portola because he was still uh, in baby when he went to uh, school. And when I time for me to, when I graduated, we had moved to uh, Lakeview. So he started in James Denman. And I continued to travel back to uh, Red Heart till I graduated. And then uh, I was, went to them in the next term, that September. I went with him to James Zimmer, James Zimmer. And he was always in sports and he was on all the basketball, so everything. He did basketball, baseball, he played. 
he was good in athletics, you know, and he was, uh, he, when we were kids, he got a paper route, <laughs> and it was one of those early morning paper routes, but it ended up being everybody in the family's paper route, because he didn't want to get up. <laughs> Mama would make us get up and go do his paper route, you know, and, uh, at that time, by the time we got to be a teenager, more often than not, he didn't want to do that paper route. So, and then uh, I think I didn't like doing it, and I did all the work around the house. And Mama would let me stay. We had to get the kids ready for school, and Madeline and Arnold would have to go do that paper <laughs> route. And uh, they did it for years. I don't know how he got out of it, but he quit doing it when he was a teenager. So all of a sudden it was Madeline and Arnold's paper out. <laughs>